now we have two equations and two variables. Any idea as to how we would solve this? Okay, there it's, I'm, I'm labeling what we have here. Equation one is the top one, equation two is the bottom one. Well, because the bottom one is fully defined in terms of y, I can substitute. In other words, I can rewrite equation one as 2x plus 3, and instead of y, I'm going to write this Thing here that I know y is equal to. So that is now equation one. Okay? You with me? Yeah. Okay. Well, equation one now is one equation and one variable. So I'm going to be able to solve for x. Let's do it. Solve, solve for x from equation 1. What's the next line going to be? Um, it's going to be 2x plus 9x minus um, 3 times 2. Oh, sorry. Okay. In other words, the first step was to eliminate the parentheses. We did that. Next step? Well, we add like terms. Okay. What do, what's the next line going to be? 11x minus 16 equals 16. Okay. And the next line? We add 16 equals Boy, you are getting good at this. <laughs> you're not only good, but you're quick. And then, uh, what's 16 plus 6? What is it? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, 22. Yeah. Remember that the sixes, you add those together, that's 12, so that singles digit has to be a two. Yeah. Okay. And now what's x? What's uh, 22 divided by 11? Now hold on. Yes. 22 divided by 11 is 2. Okay. So we were able to solve for x. x is 2. Well, if x is 2, how do I solve for y? I know that x equals 2, but I've, I've still, at this point, only solved for one variable. Okay, so y is going to be 3 times not x, but 2. What's that equal to? Uh, 6 minus 0. What number is that equal to? 4. So y is 4. So we, we solved for both variables, and we used substitution. Okay, now let's go back and do this same problem, but this time I'm going to show you how to do it using elimination. Now, first of all, for elimination, it's really better. In other words, if I take this equation right here that says y equals 3x minus 2, and I manipulate it so that I get 3x minus y equals 2, it's the same equation as all I've done is manipulate it. Okay, let me write it a little cleaner. Make 
make sure I haven't screwed that, that up. Um, hold on. I remembered I'm not using my book. 3x minus y equals 2. Okay, so if I give you the two equations in this format, first of all, this is called standard format. I've got the x term first, I've got the y term second, I've got an equal sign, and I've got a number on the right. So this is standard format. It's sometimes written like this. A is a number, B is a number, C is a number. Okay? Yeah. Both of these equations are in standard format now. Notice the difference. Before, I had Y equals 3X minus 2, but that's the same equation as this. It's just written differently. In other words, I've moved the y to the, or the 3x to the left, and the, uh, left the 2 on the right. In other words, I can turn this equation down here into this equation. The difference is, because it's now in standard format, it makes it easier to solve. To me, using elimination is far easier than substitution. However, this is a horrible first example to use uh, because we have to do something to it before we can get a variable to be eliminated. First of all, understand this, that if I have two equations, a plus b equals c and x plus y equals z, I can always add those equations or subtract them. In other words, A plus B plus X plus Y has to equal C plus Z. That is a mathematical process that you can always do. You can always add equations. You can always subtract equations. In other words, a plus b minus x minus y equals c minus z. So just being able to know that is an important thing, is that you can always add two equations together or you can always subtract two equations. Another thing you can always do to equations is anything you want to one side as long as you do it to the other, okay? Chris, you still there? Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. what I'm, oh, excuse me. I understand why there's a problem. I set the phone aside and put my microphone in front of me and I forgot I was speaking on my phone. Does that make it a little better? Yeah. Okay. All right. I can take the second equation and multiply both sides by 3, right? Yeah. That's one of the things I'm allowed to do. All right, so let's do that. So let's rewrite equation 2. I'm multiplying the left side by 3. It's going to give me this. Multiply the right side by 3. gives me that. Now, those two equations are essentially the same as those two equations. I didn't change anything. I just took the second one and multiplied both sides by 3. It's the same equation. The difference is now, if I add these two equations, what do I get? Well, add the 2x and 9x. What's that? Oh, that's 11. Add the plus 3y to the minus 3y. You get a, a zero? Yeah, one. zero. That totally cancels, cancels out. Add the two numbers. Oh, add them? Uh-huh. All right, so that's going to be a 
that in plain view. Okay. Now you've got 11x equals 22. Same thing we got the first time we did the problem. Uh -huh. the, the difference is this is easier, I think. I think the math, when you can use elimination, is easier. Now, once you've solved for x, you can go back into either equation to solve for y. Now, I'm going to go into the simplest equation, which is this one, just because it doesn't have this big number 9 multiplying by x. So if I substitute what I know to be true, that x is equal to 2, then I have 2 times 2 plus 3y equals 16. Well, that means that 4 plus 3y equals 16. So help me from this point. What's the next step? Um, you uh, subtract 4 plus 3. Okay, so th what's the next line? Read me the next line. Which is? In, in other four. words, when I say, read me the next line, I, I kind of mean after you simplify it. In other words, instead of saying 16 minus 4, give me that number. Oh, sorry. All right. So it's going to be 3y equals 12. Okay. In other words, that's just one of many simple calculations you have to have to be doing, and that's why I emphasize the A plus math so much. So what's y equal to? Uh, y equal to 4. Okay. So we came up with the same solution. y equal 4, x equal 2. Only we did it a much easier way, I think. Only because we were given the two equations in standard format. That Remember what standard format is. That's where your x and your y are on one side of the equation and a the other side is a number. Yeah. So in these exercises, I can tell by the instructions that it says choose a method and solve. So what that tells me is that you're supposed to know how to use either method. You're supposed to know how to use substitution. You're supposed to know how to use elimination. The thing is, is that all six of these problems we're looking at here, they are in standard format. So what method are we going to use to solve each of these? Uh, elimination. Yeah. The only time I ever use substitution is if one of the form, one of the equations is in a format where y is already, or one of the variables. It doesn't have to be y. Let's take the following. If I had 5x plus 2y equals 17, and I say x is equal to 2y minus 3, well, x is fully defined. So if I was given this situation, I wouldn't use elimination. I would use substitution. I would go back to this equation, and wherever I saw x, I would substitute 2y minus 3 in parentheses. Then I would have one equation with one variable, which I could solve for y. And then once I've solved for y, I go down here and solve for x. So which method you choose depends on how you're given the equations. All right, so let's go to number two. X plus Y equals five, and X minus three Y equals one. What's the simplest thing I could do? Well, we've already decided we're going to use elimination on all six of these. So how can I eliminate a variable? What's the simplest thing I could do to eliminate a variable? Um, you can. 
How about if I subtract the two equations from one another? Oh. That's going to yeah. get rid of x, right? In other words, if I put a big subtraction sign right there, you subtract every term, well, what's x minus x? That's zero. That eliminates the x variable. So let's do that. Now, what is y? Subtract a minus 3y. In other oh, words, you have to take into account both of those signs at this point. Uh, 4y? Yeah. Plus 4y. Subtract the numbers. 4. What's y equal to? y equals 1. What's x equal to? x is equal to 0. No. You have to take your y answer. Just because we eliminated x doesn't mean it's equal to zero. Okay? I can understand why you would say that. But the way it's rarely going to be equal to zero, let me tell you that. It, it, it's not a common answer for either variable. But we know that x plus y equals 5, and we know that y is 1. What is x equal to? What's that? X is 4. Yeah. In other words, by substituting our y answer into, we could have done it into either equation, but this is probably the simpler one. So we got x plus 1 equals 5, subtract 1 from both sides, x equals 4. And we have both variables solved for. Okay? And on that one, notice that we didn't have to do what we had to do on the first one. On the first one, we had to multiply the second equation before we could add or subtract them. In other words, we didn't have to use that intermediate step on number two. We could just subtract both equations and get rid of the x immediately. Yeah. All right, let's look at this top one on the left. And I'm going to label these because when I'm teaching this, I find it easier to refer to the equation as equation number one or equation number two. Now, one thing you don't want to do on these is bring fractions into play if you don't have to. Okay. In other words, yes. the idea is to make the coefficient of one of the variables the same or the opposite of one another so that you can either add or subtract them. Well, I could multiply the bottom by five halves, and that would give me a coefficient on the x variable of five. But that means I'm going to have to multiply this number over here by 5 halves, and that's going to introduce fractions, and fractions terrify me. I don't want to work with them. Okay? So, to avoid that, we could do something like multiply the top equation by 5 and the bottom equation by 2. What do you get when you multiply the top equation by 5? When I say that, I mean both sides. Yeah, maybe 25 x minus... Do I, do I uh, times the 3 there? Also? Yes, multiply every term by 5. All right, that's going to be 10. And y, and then... Uh, uh, 30. 30. Okay. And the second equation, we're going to multiply both sides by 2. Uh, yeah. and no, by 2. Uh, yeah, I'll do the second one first. It's going to be uh, 4x plus 10y. And, uh, 
28. Yeah. Okay. Now notice that I've got a new equation 1 and a new equation 2, but the beauty is, is that that 10 agrees with that 10, and is all I have to do is add these two equations together, and I'm going to eliminate my y. Do it? Yes. How many X's do I have? Uh, 29 X's. No Y's, so this thing is equal to, what's 30 and 28? Uh, 58. And you'll notice that 58 is 2 times 29, so when I divide both sides by 29, I get 2. Okay, now, I know that x equals 2, so let me write that up here in the corner. Which equation are you going to use to solve for y? Um, you got a choice of four of them. Would it be one of the top two or one of the second two? Uh, the top two. Yeah, the simplest one. Okay. Would it be the one where y has a positive coefficient or a negative coefficient? Positive. Yeah. So let's choose this one right here. You don't always have to use the positive coefficient. If the, the one that's the really simpler equation has a negative coefficient, you can deal with that. But if you have a choice, let's use a positive coefficient. So now I substitute x equal 2. What's the next line I'm going to write right here? Uh, four and Not 4x. Four. X. four. Because I'm substituting 2 for x, so what I have is 2 times 2. So it's 4 plus 5y equals 14. Okay, let's erase everything so I can continue forward. Keep going. Now I got, I'm trying to solve for y. I've already solved for x, so take this and solve for y. Good. So that's what these problems are all about. And in fact, I think you have enough information now that you could actually probably do the rest of them on your own. Um, yeah. We still have five minutes, so let's not stop yet. Uh, let's do another one. Let's see. Let's do C. You can tell that some of these are harder than others. It depends on how much manipulation of each equation you need to do. What's going to be the easiest thing to do here? If I add the two equations, I'm going to have 9x plus 10y. In other words, I will not have eliminated a variable. Oh. The goal I... is to get rid of one of the variables by being able to add or subtract the two equations. Oh, so we're going to subtract the There you uh, go. What? Yeah. Now, some people might choose to multiply the bottom equation by negative 1 so that they could then add the equations. But I have found that frequently it's just simpler to just go ahead and subtract the two equations. What do I get? It's going to be uh, 9x plus 3x uh, equals negative 6. Subtract those two numbers. What is 6 minus a minus 12? Oh, oh, look at that. All right. 
In other words, I'm subtracting. There's a big negative sign there. Yeah. So then, isn't it going to be a positive number because those two senses are Uh-huh. Yep. What is it? It's going to be a 18. Okay. What's X? Uh, Always uh, know that for this level, they're going to give you whole numbers for these. So know that 18 divided by 3 is going to be a whole number. What whole number is it? Uh, going to be 6. Okay. Now how do I solve for Y? Uh, Work please, me please. work me through it. All right, so for Y we're going to say... Uh, which, which equation are we going to choose, first of all? The top one. Number one, okay. Tell me what I should write. I like that decision because there's all positive numbers in the top. Yeah. It's going to be 36 plus 5y equals 6. Okay, next line. What? Next line. We still have to solve for y. So it's going to be a 5y equals 6 minus 36, and then that's going to be 5y equals 30, and then... Hold on. What's 6 minus 36? Remember, whenever you take away a bigger number from a smaller number, your answer's got to be negative. Oh, well, it's going to be a negative 30. So what's y equal to? You got it. So this problem was actually easier than this problem here. Number B was the hardest one yet because we couldn't do anything until we manipulated both equations. Whereas C, we were able to immediately subtract the two equations to eliminate a variable. So that's how you solve two equations and two unknowns, especially when they're all in standard format. Uh, if you want something to practice on between now and our next session, do the rest of these. Do these other two and see if you can do them. But I think you can. At this point, I believe your skills are such that you should be able to do both of these. But that's where we'll pick up next time. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Talk to you later. All right. Goodbye. Bye-bye.